hello, uh, happy Easter. It is uh, Bank Holiday Monday. It is. Uh, and we're working, Katie. I know. And Sinead's working, I and know. Robert's working, I know. and yes, they're all here, and it's hands on deck. Yes. Uh, we are shaping up to be a fairly substantial auction again, and we thought we better work on the Monday and to keep the ball rolling because Friday comes upon us very quick. Uh, it is Bank Holiday Monday. I hope you all had a good Easter. I uh, hope you all had a tipple or three. And uh, can I just say uh, thank you to everybody for my birthday wishes. They were very much appreciated. Yeah. And he did treat me like a queen. Yeah. <laughs> As opposed to every other day when I treat you like a queen anyhow. That is true. Yeah, 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 yeah true. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, quick video today because it is Bank Holiday and we are busy working and getting uh, the photography done and everything done. Um, one of the things that's probably we get asked the most is why are bottles collectible? Yeah. What makes a bottle collectible? What's going to be collectible in the future? And the simple answer is we don't know. Having a breeze. Not a clue. It is literally <laughs> a lottery. Look, there's a few fundamentals <laughs> that work. But I mean, again, it's it's these random things that happen every month that we sort of stand and we just go, what? Um People are, are, are strange, I think is the best way to do it. Why do people pay, you know, certain prices for some bottles and other prices? Last month we had 35 middle and very rare 2023s in the auction uh, as individual bottles. They ranged in price from 360 up to 485. And the question we get asked is, what was the difference between their bottle and my bottle? Oh, it was higher in the list or it wasn't higher in the list. And that's not true. I mean, if anybody goes and takes the time and looks at the auction, it doesn't make any difference where it is in the yep. auction. It is just people get a wee bit of tunnel vision. They're chasing a bottle. They don't look around or they put a maximum bid in. sometimes it's just that they, 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 they see the amount of bottles and they're like, holy God. Yeah. And then they just pick one. Yeah. It's Can't like, be saying holy God, it's Easter. So yeah, but he's way up to... Yeah, yeah. he's on it. Anyhow, but like people just pick one. And, and go to after. just go after exactly. that's it there Instead is ton of, of vision yeah 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 buggering around and, and I know from having conversations with some people they sort of go like they get tunnel vision when they get the outbid notification it's like oh I'll not be outbid yeah. uh, so so that's what happened but again why are some bottles more popular than why are some brands more popular there, there's just loads of little fundamentals a couple of the bottles I picked off the shelf the Bushmills the Causeway Coats uh, Causeway Collection. Everybody was going crazy over the Causeway Collection when it was first released. Uh, I mean, some of the, the, the great Bushmills fans, yeah. you know, they were really, really excited. And we were really excited and, and still are really excited about it um, because we always knew that they had to have some great cast down there other than the, the Black Bush and the Bushmills 16 and the Bushmills 21 and all the rest. So they started with this Causeway Collection. Uh, some people are causing it Causeway 1 which was the first release of 10-12 bottles and now there's another release and, and so on I don't think I, I personally don't think that Bushmills uh, sort of even think of it in that way they no. just are releasing the bottles to various different markets and prime example is that Burgundy Cask one that went out for the, the Whiskey Club in Australia uh, in last month's auction it went uh, top price and on the back of that, was it last month or the month before, Sinead? Was it last month or the month before? Burgundy? Yeah, yeah. the first one. It was February, was it not? Yeah. When it went really high. Um, on the back of that, we got so many emails going, uh, I have a bottle, uh, how do I get it into you? And all of them happened to be from people with an Australian grime twang <laughs> on an email. <laughs> their .com.au email address. Yes. Um, and they're sort of saying, and we're trying to have the conversation of, because it sold for such and such a price, it was what fourteen, fifteen hundred euro or something, something like that. I can't remember. There's no, absolutely no guarantee it's going to go that oh God, no. That was literally a snapshot in time. Uh, a couple of guys going after it. Obviously, they must have uh, a fair good collection of the Bushmills and wanted to have every release. And there's no guarantee. And we've seen that in last month where it did drop back yeah. a bit. Still done a great price. We explained that to most of the guys who were trying to submit the bottles, and they're sort of going, "I still don't care." I still want to get it in. I could be the lucky one. So that was a Bushmills one. Uh, the new one, the Green Spot Quails Gate. Again, uh, you know that the, the talk around it that it's a limited edition release, uh, which I find a sort of strange thing for them to say and do because the Leoville Barton and the Chateau Montalina aren't a limited edition release. They are just a, a general 
release. But this one says on the front of it, limited edition. Maybe they're not going to do a big run of it. Yeah, but again, the, what's it going to be? And I mean, it's 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 this mixed messaging that comes out sometimes it's like from. The gold yeah, and I, I still have a wee voice in the back of my head going. At some stage, there'll be another reincarnation of those. Mm. I don't know because they're just they're they're realizing what's happening, what's selling. It's the the thought of it being a limited edition puts people after it. And again, yeah, this well, if month, it's not a limited edition and they chuck out another one, people are not going to be happy. But this is what happens, Katie. This it happens all the time. Yeah. I mean, it does happen all the time. I mean, we've seen it with a few bottles. Um, and and we've a fair few quails gates in this we month's do. auction. It's hard to find in retail because everybody's going and buying three, four, five bottles of it. Um, beside that is, I suppose, the daddy of That's them all. Nice it is nice. It is nice. Uh, we have opened a bottle we of it. it. Yes, it is nice. It is uh, nice. Beside that is, uh, look, is the daddy of them, uh, the collectibles and the one that we ask, we answer every month of going, I don't know. Um, I, I don't know is the honest answer. <laughs> it is literally, I don't know. Uh, now people are saying, well, what do I do? I've got the, the Brian Nation set and do I continue on? Is this a new set because it's a new presentation box or yada, yada, yada. Lads, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it is literally. And I'm, I, I'm coming across like we, we don't know. But it's just so fluid at the minute. The whole market, uh, you know, prices are still holding quite well when you yeah. would expect there would have been a wee bit of a dip with energy crisis, with everything else, with people's bills. People are still looking to invest in something and they're looking around for an alternative to banks. Money's no good in the bank anymore. And uh, uh, whiskey uh, is a good one. There's hardly a week that you don't pick up a newspaper or, or you hear an article or something yeah. about how well whiskey's doing. This weekend we had about uh, the Jemson Orange and about all these different things. So look, the, the, the hype is there. Is the bubble going to burst? My thoughts on it is no. It it's going to slow down. I think it's going to slow down, um. But I think it's the the, the demand is still there worldwide for it. The other end of this spectrum is the ones that what happens when people disengage from it. So again, Waterford was one of them when it first came out. Everybody went bananas over it. Everybody had to have you know the 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 body go backwards yeah, so we had a sea of blue here yeah it was day. literally a sea of blue and there's still quite a few but now it's for the other reason it's yeah. because people are sort of going nah i'm not that concerned about them anymore the collection's too big where do you stop and all these things and that is one of the problems is that people start to realize if you start collecting every bottle from every release of that waterford the amount of real estate it takes That's up huge. is one thing is huge but when does it stop? If you just keep going and keep going and keep going, when does it stop? Now, if you've got the space and you've got the budget, keep her let, lad. Rock on. Rock on and, and, and see what you can do. People are starting to open their bottles. And again, does that contribute to the collectability of it? If something's really, really good, does it mean then that it holds its value and people start holding on to the bottles and trying to buy whatever bottles are on the market? If it's not quite what their expectation is, do they go, ah, do you know what, I'll let it go, I'm not really that pushy. And then it. the other thing is, if they're not drinking it, it's not a, it's not a limited thing. And yeah, well yeah. we want people drinking yeah, whiskeys, course, because yeah. ultimately, the more people that drink the whiskeys, the rarer the unopened bottles that's, get. And that's then it goes that's where I was going, yeah. like, like what's the point, because it'll still, it'll not increase it, in value. It's like what I say about Midland Very Rare 2020. If there was, we're guesstimating that the number 16,000. I guesstimate that there's 15,000 of them unopened. No problem. So everybody's saying to us, oh, it'll, it'll be the 09 or it'll be the 88. And I'm going, no. Mm -hmm. In 09 and 88, the Nobody bottles were being collecting. opened. Yep. They were being drank. Bars were open. Travel retail was open. They were being used. Pop 2020, whiskeys. everybody was sort of going, I'll keep that, I'll keep that, I'll keep that. Uh, again, beside that, uh, just an example of, you know, why doesn't this go for the, the, the tens of thousands of an old bottle so this is one of the old legacy crawford's uh, old comer so this is from the old comer distillery up in uh, northern ireland uh, as we know ecklenville have now bought the brand the old comer brand uh, but again that's a 22 year old um whiskey with legacy with history with yeah. heritage but yet they don't go that mad of money they go you pick them up for 700 quid 
And you won't find that many of them. There's definitely not 16,000 of them out there. Because most people are looking at them going, that's not a pretty bottle. But when they're paying... Uh, I know, I know. In excess of that price for middle and very rare 2020, where there is at least, we reckon, well, 10,000 plus, anyhow. So again, another one. And beside that, I put just literally the definition of it. So Bushmills, 21-year-old, rare, tree wood, on the front of it. Sinead, if you come in, year 2020. So this is a 2020 release of the Bushmills. Now again, I know Bushmills' argument is it's the core release and it's out every year. The recipe doesn't change, unlike the, the Middleton uh, 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 very rare vintage every year. But I mean, again... Yeah, but the difference is that's not a blend. That's not a blend. No, it's not a blend. Yeah, no, it's a single malt. Yeah. Which should, in theory, make yeah. it a wee bit more special. But again, a 2020 Bushmills 21, as opposed to a Midland very rare 2020, the price is you'll buy two or three of the Bushmills for the, for price. the price of yeah, well the that Midland. Is true, yeah. Why? Stop. And that's the thing. There's no point. You don't no, no, to be fractured. I, and it does regularly because when, as I say, people love to have the conversations with me and ask me questions like this about it. And I'm sort of going, I don't know. It's just not that clear cut. There's no black and white answers. Um, I'd love to hear people's thoughts on it. Um, you know, send us your thoughts on the social media. We'll share these, uh, this video across social media as we always do. I'd love to hear what other people think about it. I know I've had loads of conversations with people and them talking about what they think and the reasons why bottles are so collectible or it's all hype and you know there's people collecting Middleton now that I would have no interest in whiskey they're no. just hearing that yeah or somebody's telling them that they should buy a bottle yeah you know I, I the, even the laughs of you know people getting the names wrong and the, I mean, the spelling's a silly little thing but you know spelling it Middleton M-I-D-D-L-E and and you sort of just go look you're not really a whiskey fan, are you? You're just literally buying that. And there's nothing wrong with that. No. I'm all for it. I'm, that's how I started out, was was uh, as an investment thing. But that's it. Uh, we better get back to work today, seeing it is Bank Holiday Monday. Um, we do have to try and squeeze in having a crisp sandwich at some stage as well. Yay. Um, crisp sandwich. I'll treat you. Uh, you're I'll, so I'll, kind. I'll buy a ba bag of tato between us all. Bag of tato. Between the four of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we'll be back tomorrow yes. Tuesday the, hopefully the office will be full of staff tomorrow and we'll get loads of work done but between now and then bye good luck see you